Tom Crenshaw, who did Alphas in West Country, um, went and sort of did a course with the restorers to learn how to look after it, and uh, cherishes it and loves it. But um, I, it's a car that, it, sort of thinking back to it, it's just so good. It's, it's funnily enough, it's it, it's got parallels with some of the great sort of uh, great Ferraris. But it could do so many things, so that you could win the Mediabina in it in its period, or you could go to the shops in it and uh, it runs on regular petrol. It, it's just so usable. Usability is the key to value in many ways, and, and uh, the Ferrari GTO is a classic example yeah, of that. Absolutely. Uh, we've got time for one more, and then I must obviously get their, um, their two cars in their dream garage, which I hope they've been thinking about. Any more questions? Any more questions? Can you just ask this one? Yeah. Um, if you were to choose a car which is a near classic, hasn't got there yet, the future garage ideal, uh, and you don't have perhaps more than 20 grand to spend. It's not a personal statement, this, but anyway, you, you were going to spend more than, no more than 20 grand. What do you think is the car that we will all be looking back on in 30 years' time, which you would thought, I should have bought one of those? There was something that came up at this symposium that uh, Doug was talking about, which was a young guy who came and talked to us about Japanese cars mm. and what might be interesting out of the Japanese marketplace. Mm. I think for that sort of budget, uh, you're either looking at the sort of bottom end of uh, some not quite nice alphas, but it really the thing to do would be go and explore some of the Japanese cars. I think that's a very wise thing to do. I think the Japanese cars are hugely underrated. They're, they're hugely reviled by collectors. Uh, by collectors, this is. Um, uh, and uh, the chap that, 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 that uh, Nick's talking about is um, a, a young American guy called David Swig. And David races Rob Walton's Scarab sports car in America very successfully. So he's no slouch in these things. But he's a young guy and he, he, he was looking around for something that was affordable. And there are a number of Japanese, quite small volume production, GT models, um, which were actually um, remarkable value for the amount of performance that you can get from. And it's a great way of, of, of getting into that kind of area of an older car from the, the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, which delivers real performance, real bang for your buck. Mm. Right, uh, time has marched on, sadly. Uh, our panellists have uh, got to go. Finally, Sir Sterling, two cars in your garage, what would you have? Anything one, you like. One would be a 300 SLR, which I think is the greatest sports car ever built. And probably after that, I'd probably say, I have to say a 250F or a 300 SLR. I don't know, 300 F maybe. It's Mesa. Okay, good stuff. Emmanuel. It depends if I can borrow some money from Credit Suisse. <laughs> 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 The, the car that I always dreamt of is uh, the 250 short wheel base. For me, it's got a beautiful, beautiful shape. It's just, for me, it's really beautiful. And then the Audi R8, I won the one with, the one I talked about before. But they are quite expensive, so it depends on the interest rate. Give yeah. you a good rate. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nick. Uh, well, I'd have to say the Ferrari GTO. Out of uh, because I just think it's a wonderful car, and because I'm always keen to talk the value up. So, um, <laughs> uh, and I wasn't you, sure you were allowed to choose something you've already got. Oh, yes, of oh, course you are. Yeah. Um, and it, it it comes back to what what I was saying about the uh, the Alpha. It's that thing about a car you can do anything with. Short wheel base, very similar. That you could race it, you can rally it, you can use it drive it on the roads, you can do whatever you want. It'll do anything pretty well. Uh, the second car, trickier. Uh, at a race level, um, I'd go for, I'd be torn between Birdcage and um, a pre-war Aston Martin, only because I've still got the one I bought in 1973. I still race it, all my kids have raced it. Uh, it's a wonderful, there's something about a vintage car or that, that older car that's sort of easier to battle and you can do it yourself. 
that the one you want to race in here? Oh, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. Oh, well researched, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's something about um, older cars that I, I really like, still really like, and I like the idea of being able to get my uh, rather expensive snap on spanners out and get them dirty. Good stuff. And Doc? Ah, oh, well, I once had the, um, the tremendous um, privilege of driving a 1970 flat 12 Formula One Ferrari with the 312B. Jackie Eads car. Um, and Jackie is very narrow in the hips, and I am extremely broad. And so the only way I could get into this thing was to twist my pelvis around and lay on my side <laughs> in the cockpit. And I was so determined to drive this thing, having been, been offered the opportunity. Um, my, my pelvis was side on, my feet were straight, my shoulders were straight. I developed a sort of a corkscrew in the middle. And, and um, just, it was the most fantastic experience. And the gear change in that car was like the bolt on a rifle. It was just absolutely fantastic car. And the second one um, would be not Sterling's open version of the 300 SLR, but the Ulanel Coupe. The, the coupe, uh, coupe version that was built for, for Rudolf Huber, our chief engineer. Um, and I had the opportunity to drive that in the Millimillia Retro and actually experience for myself some, to some degree, of what Sterling experienced driving the open one in the real race in 55 with our late friend Dennis Jenkinson beside him, telling him the way. And that was really special. Really, really special. Good place to end. Um, I hope, like me, that despite it being Friday the 13th, you feel rather lucky uh, to have been here tonight and to have listened to this. Uh, would you please, um, I was going to say raise the roof, but don't because it's new. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Sterling Moss, Emmanuel Piro, Nick Mason, and Doug Knight. <laughs>